What is going on guys? This is Daniel and today we're talking post up concepts not post moves for the post player but post up concepts for the four off ball players during a post up. I'll be basically breaking down the keys to success during a post up so let's get to it. Let's first talk about the three basic good options a guard has when he passes it into the post. You could make it more complex and have him screen for somebody after he passes it in, but generally, these are three basic good options. The first, one will pass it into four, then cut around for looking for a handoff. Watch Charlotte here execute this nicely. Notice here when Henderson cuts around Jefferson, he doesn't receive the handoff, so he clears out to the opposite three-point line. Next is simply cutting through the paint. One would pass it into four, then cut through. Here Henderson passes it into Jefferson, cuts through and clears out, and Jefferson can score. Here Gary Payton will cut through, and his defender falls asleep so he can receive the ball back on a through cut. Notice here when Payton passes it into the post, his man will double the post, so when he cuts through, he gets an opening and finds Sean Kemp for an open jumper. The last of the basic options is once one passes it into four, he simply clears out along the three-point line. I prefer the other ways, but this is certainly acceptable. Watch Wesley Matthews pass it inside, then simply clear out, and here he actually receives the ball back and hits a three. Now what you don't want to do is have one pass it into five in this case and just stand there. This allows X1 to annoy and get in the way of five's post up. Here watch when the guard passes it into the post, he just stands there. This allows his man to harass the post up player. They eventually have to pass it out because of it and they get a bad shot. But of course, if you have, I don't know, Shaq on your team, you could just stand there because he'll usually go into his post move right away and usually score. Now, let's talk about spacing on a post up. Okay, so let's say four in this case can shoot from the outside. You have three in the opposite corner, two foul line extended. It's important to have a person in that corner and a person foul line extended, and then one and four can space out accordingly. Here Boris Diaw is posting up and he'll kick it out to great Phoenix spacing. Notice how no player is standing right next to a teammate and they move it well but good defense by the Lakers forcing a miss. Now let's say for instance 4 cannot shoot, that's fine you just have him on the opposite block while 5 is posting up. Notice here how the spacing is pretty solid as Cody Zeller is on that opposite block and Jefferson can draw a foul. Now what you don't want is spacing like this, cause this makes it easier for the defense to clog the paint and for them to defend the kickout. Here Washington doesn't have great spacing which allows Indiana to clog the paint and Nene's only choice is to take a fadeaway. Now let's move on to cutting on a post up. It's all about timing and reading the defense and here too may catch his man ball watching so a simple cut and if 5 sees him they can execute a nice backdoor cut for a layup. Here Shaq is posting up and Rick Fox sees his man turn his head so he cuts backdoor for a layup. The big man on the opposite block can also cut to an opening, 4 could maybe cut to the high post or here he cuts along the baseline. Here, watch Boris Dia find Aaron Baines cutting along the baseline. Cutting is also crucial when the defense is doubling the post. On the weak side, there might be separate 3-on-2 or 2-on-1 scenarios, and a well-timed cut can often lead to 2 points. Here, you'll notice Denver double the post, and Seattle's weak side players aren't just going to stand there, but here Sean Kemp cuts and gets a layup. If the post player and the cutter are on the same page, this is almost too easy. Boris Diaw is posting up here and the Lakers double and this gets Phoenix a 2 on 1 on the weak side and you'll notice Sean Marion cut sucking in the Laker defender and opening up a kick out. Notice here Miami is posting up LeBron but the weak side players are so stagnant they're well spaced but they don't move and this makes it much easier for Indiana to defend and Paul George can tip a pass away because of the lack of movement. Now let's talk about screens off the ball and this could be part of a set play or it could be spontaneous. A basic one is while 5 is posting up, 4 simply sets an away screen for 2 and 2 could curl it, maybe get an open jumper. 
Here you'll see DL posting up, and there will be an away screen set for Barbosa. And he doesn't get the shot here, but there is great movement, and this takes the pressure and focus off Diao, who can score. I also often see a double staggered screen while a player is posting up. Here, Washington will set a double staggered screen for Beal, and while Beal doesn't get the pass here, then they uses the movement to post up and get an enclosed shot. And here Miami sets a double staggered screen for Ray Allen on a post up, and here he does get the shot. You can also execute a flare screen to try to get two in this case an open three. Again, this could be spontaneous or part of a set play. Maybe even more common is this type of flare screen. Not the greatest example, but here Robin Lopez will set a flare screen to free up Nick Batum. Now this almost has to be part of a set play, but 4 here can set a back screen for 2 for a 3 pointer. This is called the hammer action and watch here how San Antonio is in perfect coordination and they hit Patty Mills for an open 3. And part of the triangle offense is setting a screen for a big man in the lane, as 2 does here and 4 would look for a foul line jumper or a curl. Here the Knicks Summer League team runs it, though they can't convert. So we've gone over what happens when the big man gets the ball, but what if he's fronted or denied? So here X4 is denying for the pass, so the first option, if it's available, is one could throw a lob to 4. Here Lamarcus Aldridge is fronted, so he calls for a lob and gets a layup. Now, if the lob isn't available, 5, the opposite big man, could flash to the high post and 1 could hit him and 5 could hit 4 for a high low. Notice when Duncan is being fronted, DL instinctively flashes and they go high low. Well, there you have it guys, that's the basics. I wanted to keep things simple and NBA teams might run things a little more complex, but generally this is what you see. Also, I didn't get to it, but to get good post position in the first place, you can run your big man off screens or out of a set. Well, thanks for watching and see you next time.